Right, so this video is going to cover organic chemistry from the unit 1 um, part of the specification. Um, so organic chemistry so organic chemistry, basically organic chemistry is carbon chemistry um, is, is sort of one way to think of it and it's 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 chemistry that, it, that invariably involves carbons, hydrogens, oxygens mainly, and that's certainly within unit one, unit two. Uh, that's what you've come across. So, an organic compound is going to contain um, carbon. Uh, within this unit one part, and there is more when you look at unit two, but within unit one, the organic molecules you're expected to know are um, alkanes, alkenes. Um, and haloalkanes, although they don't really come up that much, to be honest. I'm not going to go into how to name these or too much detail of these because that's covered in the in the nomenclature um, video. Um, so this is just really this is the video is isn't to look at how to name these; it's to look at the properties of them, uses, um, and then ultimately in the next video we'll be looking at those as fuels. So alkanes. A few bits about these though. Um, Things you do need to know. Alkanes, general formula, CN, H2N, plus 2, e.g. C4, H10. Um, look at alkanes, general formula, CN, H2N, e.g. C4, H8. And haloalkanes are just alkanes, but with a halogen in there as well. So writing a general form is slightly more difficult because it depends on how many halogens you've got in so I'm not going to worry about that but an example would be something like chloromethane where you would have um, draw a picture different colour, we would have something like this uh, with, a, with a chlorine on. So a methane uh, basic molecule with a chlorine involved. Right, um, a couple other points then. So Recently, looking through papers, I've seen a few things asked, and that's things like, well, uh, what's the term? Alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. What does that mean? So, first of all, these are both hydrocarbons. Uh, what that means is it's a molecule that contains only, and that's the key thing, carbon and hydrogen. This is not a hydrocarbon because it contains halogen, so it's not a hydrocarbon. These are because they only contain carbon and hydrogen. And then the other term there was this um, saturated and unsaturated. So alkaline, alkanes are classed as saturated, not saturated. They're classed as saturated. Uh, and alkenes are classed as unsaturated. And really, the, the definition of that is saturated only single bonds and for alkanes we have a double bond namely the carbon-carbon double bond present um, so alkanes, alkenes then right going to start really, I'm going to go in what I think is a quite a logical order and that's starting with alkanes and then working right the way through. It's not really going to touch on haloalkanes a, a lot at all to be honest. Um, it's going to concentrate most on alkanes and alkenes and how they tie in through uh, first of all crude oil, then a fractional distillation uh, and finally cracking uh, with a very very brief mention of, of polymers at the end. So first things first. Alkanes, where do they come from? Well, alkanes come from crude oil, really. Or a better way to do that is that uh, crude oil is a mixture of alkanes. Now, as far as I'm aware, that's an oversimplification, but it gets the point across fine. So it's a mixture of, of alkanes, not haloalkanes, just alkanes. Now, because it's a mixture, that means it can be separated and that's quite an important thing we can separate it and the way we do separate it is we use a fractionating column which looks something like this so this here is the fractionating column and what's quite useful or what's quite and there's a few points here just ignore those for now well, actually I'm going to touch on a bit of those what's quite um, 
useful really when it comes to crude oil is that the various bits in crude oil, the various alkanes, there are there are v varying lengths, um, and the different length denotes really the boiling point. So, so look, bigger alkane equals higher boiling point, smaller alkane equals lower. When I'm saying bigger and smaller, I'm really meaning sort of chain length more than anything. So bigger alkane, higher boiling point, smaller alkane, lower boiling point. And if you've already looked at the sort of bonding topic, in terms of intermolecular forces, we have uh, greater van der Waals forces in the bigger molecule than uh, the smaller molecule where they are lower. Therefore, lower boiling point and a higher boiling point here. More energy required to separate them, less energy required. So we've got this, this phenomenon. And what that means is that if we put in the crude oil into here, what we find is that at this point here, or actually, we put it in as a, as a vapour. That's the ideal situation. We heat it and it turns to a vapour. So that means in here we have crude oil vapour. Now it's worth noting that at this point some will just come off and actually will remain as a liquid. That's the things like bitumen and all the rest. You do not need to learn these, by the way. Um, it's it's just the process that you need to know. So it's no different with GCSE. So vapour goes in, crude oil vapour, some actually either condenses at this point or just goes in as a liquid. It's um it, it isn't it has a too high a boiling point, it's too long of a molecule. What we then find is that the crude oil vapour rises. Now the common misconception here is the crude oil vapour rises as crude oil vapour. We do not vaporize one alkane and then the next and then the next. We vaporize the crude oil as a whole and it rises as a vapor. And then what happens is as it rises it will cool. Now because these boiling points are different so the the varying lengths of alkanes that are present in the crude oil because we have different lengths of alkane um, as it says here high boiling point down the bottom, low boiling point at the top. As we go up here the fractionating column cools and you can see it cool at the top hot at the bottom so it cools down as we go up and that means that the crude oil vapor cools down as it goes up now what it happens is that as we cool when we get to certain levels we will find that the crude oil vapor will condense and what's useful is the fact that actually when they condense they do so at their boiling point and that's the key thing so molecules will condense their boiling points. So they go up, they cool down, they reach their boiling point and they condense and then they can be pumped off as diesel oil, kerosene, naphtha, gasoline or they go out the top here as gases. These have such low boiling points that actually they they don't turn back to a um, it's not cool enough for them to turn into liquids. So one more time what we've got here crude oil enters as a vapour the vapour rises up the column and cools as it does so. Because the crude oil is made up of a mixture of alkanes of varying chain lengths, these all have, each chain length has a different boiling point. Therefore, as the crude oil rises up as a vapour, it cools down. As it cools down, when it reaches, or when it cools, as it cools down and it reaches its boiling point, it will then condense at its boiling point which means it can then be pumped off. And that's really the key thing when we're looking at um, fractional distillation, um, what really happens. And it's because there are a range of boiling points that allows the separation to take place. Okay, If there were not a range of boiling points, then they would all come off as one. But because there are a range, because of the mixture of alkanes present, we can separate them quite easily. So that's quite an easy thing, I think. Okay, the next thing is to think, well, we have various uses for these things. So probably the, the the most useful end is really this this top end here, where we have uh, fuels for cars and all the rest. We make a lot of money from this end. But what we find is that our crude oil invariably, and it depends on where in the world you are getting your crude oil from, but invariably has more of this end. Now that's not particularly useful, and that's not very profitable. We're not going to make as much money from that. We want more of this stuff here. So what we can do is we can crack it and we can crack the crude oil uh, or crack the fractions as these are called, so I should have made that more clear crack these fractions um, and make them smaller therefore making them uh, things that are 
are more useful and therefore that uh, we can sell for more money. So, cracking. Now, cracking is essentially a decomposition reaction. And that means that one thing breaks down into two things or more. So this is reacting just with itself really. Okay, Heat is causing this to break down. So in the case of the AS, what do you need to know? Well, you need to be able to, the, the thing they love to ask really is they, or they love to give you incomplete equations or rather ask you to complete equations. So you might get something like um, cetane is cracked to form hexane, butane and ethane. Um, sorry, hexane, butene and ethene. Now they would give you the form of this thing called C cetane, which is this here. It's C16, H34. And they've told you in the question they want you to make hexane, they want butene, and they want ethene. So it's a case of just sticking these down. So C6, H14 would be my hexane, my butane, butene, sorry, don't get that wrong, C4H8, and my ethene. C2H4. Now, some people, I guess, would leave that as that and just say, well, I've made hexane, I've made butene, I've made ethene. What you need to do is you need to think, well, actually, does this balance? Well, the short answer is no, it doesn't. We have 16 carbons here. We have 6, we have 10, and we have 12. So we're missing 4 carbons. So there are two ways that we can balance this. The first is we can put a 2 there. So actually make one hexene hexane, sorry, two butenes and one ethene, which now balances. The other option is we put a three here, but we do not have the two there, which would mean we obviously produce one hexane, one butene, but three ethenes, and that's a key thing. There are two options for this, equ this equation here, and this was an exam question a few years ago. Now, as I said, short alkane, more useful, therefore make more money. What's important is in an exam, do not just write more useful. More useful is fine because they are more useful. They are more useful, they are better fuels and all the rest. But the key thing is they are more useful um, and therefore they make us more money. So that's the reason really we're looking to crack. Um, these two here, these two things on this right hand side, these are our alkenes. And we can see the general formula of CnH2n, and here we have CnH2n plus 2, of course, again. Um, a couple of things about alkenes. What can we do with them? Well, first of all, we can test with them, so we can see that we've got them, and that's our classic bromine water test. Orange to colourless in the presence of an alkene. The other really good use for alkenes is... Uh, we don't use them as plastics, but we use them to make plastics. Okay, and that's the key thing. So we don't use them as plastics, we use them to make plastics the, via polymerization reactions, which is something that I believe is maybe in Unit 2, but certainly is in Unit 4 of the A2, uh, and was in GCSE anyway. So we can use alkenes to make plastics. Do not write, use them as plastics, write to make plastics. That is very important. Um, that's really, there's not a huge, huge sort of more there besides the thing to add that actually there are a couple of ways to crack molecules. And those two ways, and there have been questions asked this before, are uh, catalytic cracking and there's thermal cracking. Now, as the name suggests, catalytic cracking involves a catalyst. Thermal cracking involves heat. Now, catalytic cracking is still done at a reasonably high temperature, around about 450 degrees Celsius, with a catalyst. And I believe it's a zeolite catalyst. Um, don't quote me on that. I believe it's zeolite catalyst is used which I think is something to do with aluminium, but um, an aluminium zeolite catalyst, it's something like that. Um, the key thing of this is that when we have this reaction taking place, we tend to form aromatic um, compounds 
and fuels. And what I mean by aromatic compounds, don't worry at this level about that, this is certainly more A2, but this is what aromatic is, containing a benzene ring. Um, and the other type is thermal cracking. With thermal crack cracking, we're talking high temp, so 1000 degrees Celsius, and high pressure. And this one, we tend to form, the classic thing here is we form alkenes, obviously shorter alkanes as well, but alkenes. And I have seen a question which was, it was something like, um, name one condition rather than other than high temperature that could be used to crack whatever into something, 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 and, and alkenes. But it mentioned alkenes, and because it mentioned alkenes, the answer it was looking for, because it already given you temperature, was high pressure. So that's something to be aware of here. You're not going to be asked a huge amount of detail uh, with regard to the catalytic cracking or the thermal cracking, but you must be aware of there being the two different types. Primarily, the one that you're going to come across in your exam is going to be this one, due to them not really being able to ask you many questions on aromatic compounds. They'll stick to this one, but do bear in mind that there are the two potential uh, ones there. Um, I believe that is actually it. So, really, organic chemistry in terms of the unit one, and I'll do a separate video on the um, the fuel aspect of the organic chemistry, but in terms of the actual sort of organic, it's alkanes and alkenes mainly with that very, very small bit of halo alkanes, just make sure you can name them. Um, alkanes, separating them using fractional distillation, cracking them using cracking, um, either thermal or catalytic, um, and obviously producing more useful and more profitable short alkanes. Um, some alkenes which you can use for plastics, or use to make plastics, and that's really about that um, so there you go there's your video on uh, the organic one part of the organic from unit one